Hey guys, Clunky72 here, and today I have for you guys a 1 hour and 10 minute video for all you fine people. It features 9 replays for you guys out there, and it's us 3 marking the M48 Patton, something I promised I would do for you guys, but instead of, you know, separating these into 9 videos, I decided to comprise them all into one uh, for all of those of you with a long attention span. And those of you who don't, uh, the final battle is at 1 hour two minutes and 51 seconds there will be something on screen for you to look at with the time on it and in the description below if you want to just skip ahead to the final game the third mark of excellence battle but for those of you who want to marathon this maybe you're on a plane trip or a long car ride or something of the sort or you just want to you know you have nothing else to do today or tomorrow or the next couple of days here are the replays for you guys we find our first game and our tank in and on the map live oaks and we are taking the patent of course into the dip it is a dip or die we are playing with the baconating the one the only the true the marine himself baconating in his sheridan and we are going to try to pull out a good game now this is actually this was during the session you saw where um baconating and i both got ace tankers and i think what we called the very american replay um that was actually the game after this one so that was quite interesting. And so I did, uh, you guys got to see that. Now we put a shell into the lower plate of the E3, which uh, was actually a little bit surprising. I didn't think that would go in because uh, we kind of hit him in the center of the lower plate instead of near the sides. So that was probably 280 about effective there that we just hit. But we did get a high enough roll to go in. So as you can see there, that one bounces straight off. So now we're going to load some heat shells for the E3. E3s are pretty scary. This first game, these games are in order of when they were played. So you're going to see my mark of excellence slowly but surely go up and up and up and up. And so I thought that would be kind of interesting for you guys, and I thought you guys would enjoy that. So, uh, yeah, this first game, not the best game, but a ton of assist. I think a ton of combined damage, and I think you guys are going to enjoy that. See exactly what you can do to get as much damage out as possible, even if you are unable to shoot in return. Like, the game's going too quickly or something like that. So that's what we're going to do here. The E3, we take a huge risk. I realize, okay, our team is not progressing the fight. I decided to just, you know what, I will take the hit if I need to. And so I charge up and over, and he misses us, fortunately, there. So anyway, this is a three-mark session, so you are going to be seeing some good RNG, of course, because, well, for you to three-mark, you kind of need your shells to hit, am I right? So yeah, that's the first stroke of RNG there. Actually, kind of the second stroke. The first stroke of RNG was when we penned the E3 in the first place. The second stroke of RNG was when he missed us. Now, we put a shell into his tracks there, as you can see, and uh, we pull out three track assist ribbons there right away. I noticed, okay, he's getting clipped out. Let's track him. Put a heat shell into the side of the M103. Definitely not necessary there, but we still had it loaded from the E4. Or, sorry, for the E3. Is that another AFK tank? They have two AFK tanks. So, once again, I go for the tracks. Like I said, some RNG. Not all RNG, but a lot of it is... Um, well, luck as well. And now we have the side of the M103, so of course we're not going to go for his quite the damage. We're going to go for the tracks, but you know, RNG. RNG giveth and RNG taketh. The second shell, well, RNG tooketh again there, I guess. We have missed him twice now, but are we, gonna, we don't even go for his tracks that time. We just go, screw it, we're going for the broad side of his tank. And uh, we hit him there. We get one damaging hit. Actually, two, I guess. Two damaging hits off of the off of the M103. Now we're charging forward, going up ahead of everyone. I'm surprised Baconating isn't doing this, but we're getting all those spots. It's RU251. Boom! The shell goes in there! Holy cow! Uh, yeah, like I said, good RNG and bad RNG alike. You will see all of them, but a lot of good RNG considering this is a third mark session. Fire shot on the move. We miss, but he bounces off. The patent does not bounce off of us, and he does, in fact, damage us. RU bounces off of our tracks, but we're unable to snap the shot in this time. He does get lucky. Now they're capturing our base so we're hopefully going to be getting back there and resetting it because time is running out. RU251, boom, we put the shell into him. Come ram us. Unable to get the ram because Baconating with the howitzer finishes him off with one shot. 
Now we're going after this VK 452B. Put the shell into the side of his turret there as he angles it. Easy penetration there. But now we're not really going to be able to go through his tanks. We're going to go for his tracks now. Boom, straight into the tracks, and he misses us. Bacon he puts a heat shell into the side of that tank, giving us a ton of track assist as well. Aim up a shell at his Kapol, and we miss. We need to progress the fight. They are capturing our base, so we are going to be charging in now. VKB does get finished off. We're going to be loading heat now. Nope, that was for the VKB. We're loading back APCR. We have to reset the base. There is an E4 right there. We're going to be able to hit him. Boom, fire off the shot. Yes, we are able to hit him. And uh, you notice I'm not really going for the base right now because Bacon Ink said he, said he would handle it. So I'm letting him take care of it. E4, we put another shell into him. But he does have a long reload, so now we're going to have to get in there and get some resets off. Just kidding. No, we're not. The base has been reset multiple, multiple times, and they're not going to need us. Are we going to be able to hit this shot? Is this going to be a miracle? Yes, it is. That shell goes in. Another crazy RNG shot. Like I said, a lot of RNG is going to be happening on this. And then, uh, boom, into the tracks of the IS-7 there. We track him and damage his tank at the same time. We're going to be able to put another one into the same spot. Yes, we are. 342 damage done there. Now we're going to be aiming up shots at this patent. Nope, the STI, we switch our attention. Boom, finish him off there. Oh no, our team is still capturing the base even though we're winning by so much. We're gonna put a shell hopefully in the side of this M103. Boom, it goes into the side of the M103 there. Now we're gonna hopefully go for his tracks. Maybe track him, maybe some else damage. No, we're going for his lower plate and it bounces off. Are we gonna be able to get another shell off before the game ends? Aiming up another shot on the M103. Gave us a side of the turret, then he took it away. Boom, and we missed that shell. And that's going to be it, unfortunately. There, we are unable to get any more damaging hits because our team wanted to capture the base, but alas, the damage was done. 5,000 damage, 7,100 assisted damage, 3 tanks destroyed, a bit of block damage, and only a first class mastery badge. Now we're on to our second game, and on this one we find ourselves on the new map, Amazon. Amazon is of course the reskin version of Arctic Region. AKA Mannerheim Line, I think is what they call it on the PC. On the PC. And so we are using, of course, that theme song. And it might not sound like it fits, you know, because it's. I don't know if it has that snowy vibe to it. I kind of forget. I kind of just added it, but yeah, here it is anyway. And now I'm just rambling for information. In our patent, or any light tank, or any medium tank with good viewing for that matter, we like going up to the, where this light tank is in front of us because we're able to spot anybody who's trying to cross and shoot them in their sides but because he's spotting oh yeah this is something else you can do if you cut to the right there you are probably gonna get spotted but you'll also spot people who are sniping in the back and maybe you can get some assist so we're gonna be taking the place of this light tank there's no artillery which is good news for us because I already can dig you out of here real easy but we're hopefully gonna be getting some side shots there's our first victim in E100 shell off and it goes in whoa that was perfect timing with that uh that was sound like a missile shot in the song, so that was kind of cool. Are we going to be able to get another shot into him? Yes, we are, and we track him. He's going to be down a repair kit if he chooses to fix. It doesn't look like he choo he's choosing to fix. There he goes. His tracks go up, and we fire shell off at the t AMX 5120, that is. And unfortunately, we do miss his tank. Now we have the side of an M103. Boom, the shell goes in. Lots of tanks here. This tank is a has just an incredible ability to snapshots in. We are not spotted anymore. Now we are. And that's the back of his tank. We go for his tracks. I don't know if we meant to go for his tracks or, tracks or not. I don't remember. I don't think we actually did, but we do track him. And now we're getting paid. Not really. We only got one track to assist because he fixed it so quickly. And then he gets set on fire. Unfortunately, we don't get any of that fire because he did fix his tracks. But we're hopefully going to finish him off here. We're still not spotted. And shell away. And it misses. 0.36 accuracy on this gun. Unfortunately, it's not the greatest. T10 there is going to be hindering us just a little bit from this position because he's going to be keeping us spotted. Are you there? Snap the shot and it flies true. Goes straight in. Spotting another tank. Are we going to be able to put some shells? It is a juicy conqueror. You can't not penetrate the side of a conqueror. Oh, just as I say that, shell gets absorbed by the tracks. Unfortunately, it looks like we shot underneath the hull of his tank there instead of actually hitting his tank. Now we have a Type 4 Heavy there. Fire the shell. It hits him in his lower plate and does penetrate with our standard APCR from range, which is pretty lucky. We load heat immediately, though, going after that guy. Are you in front of us? He uh, does get away. We're slow on reactions there, and so we we're unable to snap the shot into his tank because he was sitting there for quite a while. We're loading back our APCR shells. The RU does pull out. If only we were still loaded. We might have, been, blah, 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 might have been able to put a shell into him. This is going to be a marathon, guys. So bear with me as I try my best to commentate. Because last time I had a long video like this was my 
T54 lightweight three mark session, but I didn't commentate on the. I commentated, uh, I think, on the first replay and the last replay, or a little bit on the first, a little bit on the last. But this time, I'm commentating the full hundred and ten. Sorry, one hour and ten minutes for you fine people, because uh, this is going to be a marathon for those of you who have time to watch it. Of course, those of you who don't have time to watch it. You know, maybe you can pick it up here and there, watch a replay here and there. All of these are pretty good replays, and I think we can all learn from something here. That, uh, are you getting a little bit annoying sitting there keeping us spotted? But, you know, it can't, it can't be too, you know, he's doing his job. He's doing a good job. <clears throat> he is. He's keeping me from really working this position to my maximum ability. But, um, we've gotten to the point now where we're kind of just ignoring him. Like, he's going to keep us spotted, yes, but you know what? Nobody's really f has the interest of shooting us. Now we notice a tank behind us. It looks like we're losing that flank. Hopefully we'll be able to put some shells in to support that flank from right here. Um, I can't quite find a shot. We are getting assist off of him though, which is pretty nice. View range is allowing us to spot him. We do throw, have optics on this tank at the moment, I believe. No, we. I don't think actually we do. I don't think we do have optics, if I remember correctly. We took optics off. We had it on for a little while, but then I said, you know what, DPM. And so that's what we're going for in this tank is damage per minute over view range and of course uh, what's that other thing called goodbye yeah nice play by him uh, vertical stabilizer so okay what's my loadout um, I have I don't have recon I don't have situation awareness yes I do I think I just got them yes I have recon I have situation awareness I don't have snapshot and I don't have smooth ride that's what I'm missing I don't have firefighting I don't have preventive maintenance but I am still using the case of cola because I feel as long as I don't give them my rear, I shouldn't get set on fire, and if my fuel tanks do get hit, I will fix them with my repair kit. I'm using gun rammer, vertical stabilizer, and ventilation. And that should be enough to give us, um, like 460 or 70 meters view range, something ridiculous. I think it's like 471 or 484. Uh, I think 471 is the 410 view range tanks. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's plenty. We snap a shot into the Death Star there as he drops below. Now we have the lower plate of this M103. Are we able to hit it? Yes, we are. We're able to hit this lower plate as the tanks seem to start piling into the dip with us. And so we're just shooting them as they come into the dip one by one by one. Down goes the E75. Now we're going to make our play move up against this M103. Amex 1390 has the same exact idea. Who is fighting with me this entire game? GG to him, I say. We've got to put a shell in him. We finish him off. Maybe we shouldn't have stolen that from him, but the shell goes in and we get the kill. Anyway, we confirmed it. There is a gorilla there. We're able to put a shell into him. No. There's an ISU on our left. ISU breaks our tracks off. Are we able to retaliate? No, we're not. We do not have 10 degrees of gun depression. 10 degrees and we would have been able to shoot him there, but it doesn't matter. We fire the shell off. We put the shell into him there. Is he going to be able to hit us this time? I don't think he's going to be able to penetrate our tank at this angle. No, he misses us anyway. One more shell should finish him off. And easy does it. No, it does not go in. It gets absorbed by the tracks. There's a T10 there. We're going to try to finish off that. No, we're going for the T10. Boom, into the ammo rack of the T10 there. And it looks like he gets tracked by someone else, but he does fix it. I don't know if he's a large repair kit, so I don't know if he's ammo rack permanently. Now, we don't have Eagle Eye. This is a new crew. There's a gorilla there. We fire the shell off. Boom, into the gorilla it goes. That should have bounced, but we do overmatch the top of his tank. That was a very angled shot there. Put the shell into the... No, we bounced off. A little bit of lazy aiming there, and because of that lazy aiming, we are unable to get the kill. We thought about jumping on him, but there's still plenty of hit points left. Um, and so we're going to hopefully shoot the gorilla first, and then jump on the T-10. There, now he goes down. Now we'll jump on the T-10. Going after this T-10 now, we're going to jump right on top of him and hopefully get the kill. Boom, he goes down. We don't even have to finish him off with any of our remaining shells. And down goes the ISU. And we pick up 21 damaging hits and 5 kills. And a bit of assist to go along with it. Let's take a quick, quick look at the post-game results. Holy cow, pre-beauty. I'm just kidding. Uh, it's almost 7,000 damage, almost 2,000 assisted damage, and 1,300 damage blocked. Pretty decent game there. We have to wait. This was back, um, there we go. This was back with that bug, and you had to wait for everything to pop up. There's an ace tanker, the first one of the night for you guys, or the morning, whenever I post this, probably in the morning. Our next game is on Paris, aka Ravaged Capital. Um, but I had Pandora going, because I was in the grind, the three mark grind, so I had Pandora running, and I was listening to, believe it or not, World of Tanks music. So you're going to see hear all sorts of World of Tanks music in the background. Because 
I was still trying to get a feel for all the World Tanks music, figure out what sounds like what, and then I was marking songs, like, oh, this is a good song, oh, I can use this for this kind of music. And so I was listening to World Tanks music at the time. And it goes pretty well, and then we do get interrupted by ads. <laughs> uh, in near the climax of the, the video. We got a Panther 2 here. Oh, actually, I'm starting to remember this replay, and I think I did. I played terribly at the start, so don't play how I play. But we do redeem ourselves in the end. We bounce off of the WZ111 FTG, or F, 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 FT, GFT, whatever the heck that Chinese tank destroyer is called. Huge gun on that tank. Back in, I think, 560 Alpha with a 130 millimeter. Holy cow. But uh, is he going to... There's a Panther. Panther's not very bright. We put a shell into him, but he also puts it... No, we bounce off. We His tracks absorb it. But now here comes that thing. We pull back. Is he going to miss? Ah, he doesn't even fire. He kills our driver. The Panther 2 did. And we failed to hit the center of his tank, which was exactly where we were aiming. It instead goes into his tracks. I figured while going up over that ridge, the WZ wouldn't have enough penetration to go through my upper plate. But unfortunately, he did. And I underestimated... No, I didn't. Just kidding. <laughs> like I said, I don't quite remember <laughs> how this replay goes, but uh, we will indeed. We'll. Uh, <clears throat> I remember how it ends. I do remember, and you guys are going to like the ending. I guarantee you that. It is a stalemate of an ending until one of us makes a play that either makes or breaks the game. And this is just my gameplay, my high damage game, so I do not win them all. That doesn't mean I don't win this one, but then again, that also doesn't mean I don't lose this one. Put a shell into the side of the VKB. He's coming after us. We're probably going to be losing some hit points from this. So I'm going to try to track him as he comes around the corner. But this is very difficult to do. And unfortunately, we only damage his engine. He puts a shell into us. But we're going to crush his reload and hopefully put two shells into him. Put another shell in him. He's going to get finished off. Come on, light tank. Put it in, put it in, put it in. I don't know if I'm going to beat his reload now. Actually, I'm angling and Come on. Yes, we finish him off beating his reload. And now we're down to 700 hit points, though. Now tank on our left it is still the tank destroyer this doesn't look like it's actually the game i was thinking of there's another game where i had to fight that same exact tank destroyer no the tier 9 version and i didn't realize how much gun depression he had and he popped me twice because i underestimated his gun depression uh, but this game is not that game i thought this was that game but it's not that game here comes the korea Patton. He's coming up where he doesn't see us. We put a shell on him. 370 damage done to him. We're up to 7 damaging hits. He's coming after us. He's going to be able to penetrate us. Put another shell into the side of his tank. And there is the WZ. Along with a couple more tanks. There's artillery there. The WZ misses his shot on our light tank. We're going to put a shell on him. Put the shell on him. 414 damage done into him. And our 215B finishes him off. Great shot there. We would have taken a ram and maybe even another shot. I don't know where that thing's reload is. I don't know if he would have beaten us. But now we have a mouse inside. And this is a speculative shot. Yes, it goes in. Not much of his tank there, but you know, every shot you t every shot you don't take, um, well, you miss 100%. Of so that's how the saying goes: you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Well, I guess that's kind of not true because you didn't take the shot, so you of course didn't miss the shot. But, but uh, I guess you missed your opportunity. We bounced that shell off the back of his tank. We went for his side there, but he just barely got around the corner before we were able to hit it. M103 there. He's gonna find a shot into us. No, he's not. At that bat chat tried to put a shell into us, it looks like, but now he looks, uh, eh, he's running away now. We probably don't have to worry about him right now. In the meantime, let's try to put some shells into other tanks. We're going to get into a better position here. We have more cover and a better angle than anybody who comes around that corner. Bat chat might be coming up the middle. Let's see if we can put a shell into him because he's a very valuable target. He can clip us out, but no, WZ comes around the corner and so does the mouse. And the mouse puts a shell into us. Oh my goodness, we are a one hit now. What are we going to do? There is the E4, fire shell into his lower plate, and immediately pull back. We're loading our heat shells because those are some heavily armored tanks. What are we going to do? Our team is losing this fight. There's the mouse. Shell, fire the shell off into the side of his tank, unfortunately, the side of his turret, and it bounces off. But now he's going to give us his broadside, so we're hopefully going to be putting some shells into him. No, that one goes into the ridge in front of us, and we're unable to do any damage. Firing another shell, will it go in? Boom, into the straight into the side of the mouse there. Um, even though he's got some space armor, we're hitting it nice and flush with our heat. No problem. Put a shell, fire it at the bat chat. Unfortunately, we were unable to hit him because we had the heat shell loaded. But now we're loading up APCR. Hopefully, we'll be able to finish him off here. Now, we're waiting for that perfect shot. We're waiting for him to give it to us. There it is. Boom. We fire the shell off straight into the side, the rear of his tank. Is he going to finish off our friend? Yes, he is, unfortunately, there. But are we going to be able to finish him off now? Come on, clone guy. Aim this. Don't auto-lock it. Aim it. 
We aim it up and it goes in, but there are tanks behind us. We gotta pull down below. Is the E5 going to hit us? Ah, no, he's not able to hit us. He's not able to fire the shot off. I'll, but we tied the game up. 263 finishes off the WZ, but we have an artillery unit. Aiming up a shot at his Coppola with standard APCR. Is it going to go in? Oh, no, it misses his tank completely. This is quite the scenario. We're loading up our heat now. Trying to find a shot onto his Coppola. He misses his shot. We're going to be able to put this into his... No, Artillery finishes him off, giving us the lead for just a moment until our 215B goes down. Now, I make a little bit of a misplay here, but I don't think I actually did. I think the enemy made a little bit of a misplay. There is an E4 right there, and our 263 is going in. Do I want to present my side to that E4 and get blasted? No, I really don't. I figured the E4 was going to come after me, and that 263 was going to have to fend for himself. But, in fact, the 263 finishes off the tank he was fighting, and the E4, instead of going after me, goes after the 263. And if I was still in my position, I'd be able to shoot him in the back of the tank. But it's too late now. We have to go in. We have to go in from another angle because we've given up that flank, and I apologize to the 263 for ruining his chances there. If I was still behind him, I could have held that E4 off. I just assumed that E4 was going to come around the corner and shoot at me, but he didn't. He went around the corner shooting at the 263, but the 263 is doing a great job holding on. He takes a hit, unfortunately, there, but we've got our heat loaded. We put a shell into the side of the mouse there. Uh, I believe we're still the only people who've done damage to him. Maybe the 263 has hit him as well. We still have heat loaded. We're going to go after that E4. He's the more prioritized. He's the target we need to prioritize right now. Because, oh, it's and here's the ad. Well, guys, if you want to join the army, well, here is, um, you know, an ad for you guys. Not sponsored. I'll probably uh, quiet it down just a little tiny bit because it is a little bit loud. But um, enjoy, I guess, right? Now we're going to try to get some distance off this guy. The T-92 is in a perfect position actually to support me. And hopefully he'll be putting some shells into those tanks there. I'm not sure if he will be able to though. Come on buddy, put some shells in. We're going to spot them up again. Maybe he'll hit the E4. Maybe he'll hit someone else. We fire off a shot. No, unfortunately that bounces. Come on buddy. Boom! The shell goes in. T-92 finishes them off. But um, all we do for the next three minutes guys is sit in a standoff with this mouse he does not want to leave his spot so i'm going to speed this up for you guys um as we uh, try to take this game down it's just three minutes of us not knowing what to do and now we're going to join a lives party while we wait but when we fire off a shot we miss our t92 is not able to finish him off or shoot him at all there but uh he does get away we only have three heat shells left, I just realized, and 21 APCR. This was back when I think I only carried 12 heat shells. I could be wrong. Maybe I had more and I just wasn't paying attention. But uh, I did up that to 16 once I get further into my marks of excellence, I think you'll notice. And I'd, maybe I even buffed it to 20? I'm not sure. But as you can see, we're just in the standoff. We don't know what to do. And finally, I'm like, you know what? You know what? You know what? Just kidding, we're not going to do that. That's what I was like. And then I said, okay, we're doing it. There's the mouse, spotted again. What are we going to do? Okay, I have an idea. He didn't spot me there. My artillery is not putting shells in, which is weird. Because he had a shot on the E4 when he was in that position. But now I don't know if he went AFK or something. I'm not sure what's going on. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to fight this mouse, mono e mono. Are we going to be able to kill a near full health mouse with our vehicle, which only has 235 hit points left? I am not too sure. Oh, snap. And he's shooting APCR. He can pretty much hit us anywhere. Even with our buff turrets, he'll be able to go through. Somebody's pinging the map. I don't know who that was. I don't know if that's artillery or not. But we've decided to go in. And something's going to happen, which I completely unexpected. And I think so did the mouse. And so will you guys. Um, this was like, what? You know? And uh, no, he's not flipped. And besides, even if he was... There he is right there, he's coming straight towards us, coming around the corner, oh my goodness, but we have all these dead tanks, firing off a shell, we miss him, he's kind of trying to find it, he looks confused, and this really confused me too, like, he's acting, like, what? Okay, I think he's really confused by the bush and all the dead tanks in the way, and I think he thought that was me, or he's trying to get me out of my cover by shooting, so that I would come after him, but... Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it worked how he wanted it to because we put a shell into his tracks Then we put a shell into the rear of his tank and believe it or not. I looked at this guy's stats They're not even that bad. They're almost 2,000 W and 8 and he had a really good game So I'm confused as to what's going on. Did he feed me this win? I like Like no, he's going for the back of that. I think he was overconfident is what it was I think he decided to play dumb for a little while and then realized oh crud it's too late so we decided to back up against the wall but then we tracked him again so unfortunately for this guy i think he got a little too cocky 
and we finished him off because he was a very experienced, very skilled player, but he played, well, well really bad there, like, really, really badly, uh, very unexpected. Like I said, I think that mouse was going to play with us a little bit, and then uh, we double-tracked him, and he was like, oh, crud, this isn't going how I had planned. And then we didn't let him back up against that wall in the end, And but wow, okay. 7,800 damage, only a first class, because if you guys watched yesterday's replay, maybe you guys will be able to figure out why we didn't get as much experience that game. But there's a quick look at how much the mouse did. Uh, 3,400 damage. Very confusing there as to why he didn't... You know, he didn't do that well in the end, but I, I think what happened was he was overconfident. I really do. I'm gonna I'm gonna say he thought, okay, this is gonna be an easy win. I'm just gonna let this guy shoot me a couple times and then back up against the wall, and then he was like, oh crud. But that's that's what I'm gonna go with right there. Then again though, we have no idea what's going on on the other side of the uh, the screen. For all we know, he could have been called by somebody and said, Here, little brother, quick, take my controller. But at the same time, he wasn't an idiot. Like, at first he was. Yes. He's like, herper derp derp But then in the end, you notice he tried to get his back up against the wall. So he definitely knew what he was doing. So, like I said, we don't know what was going on. Maybe his brother had it. Or he gave it to his brother, right? Or his dad, or his son. And said, Here, play for me. I gotta go do something. And then his brother or his dad was like oh my goodness you're dying give me that back or he called it's like yo guy who owns this account come back quickly i'm getting murdered and he comes by and he's like oh my goodness and uh anyway so and he came by and tried to fix it but we don't know i don't know exactly what happened there <laughs> we're on another game we're still rambling we've hit two shells so far and bounced blocked two shells off of our tank as well um, one into the MX-30B and one into the M46 Patton, a tank which I definitely need to get back to 3-mark because I kind of tried to 3-mark it already and failed. Then I only have 80 games in it, so hopefully we'll be able to get back back, back and 3-mark it. Fire a shell into the Fatherland. Nice, easy hit into him. Um, but now we're going to make a play. Are we going to take a hit? No, we are not. That was a little bit risky considering we don't have a fire extinguisher or a firefighting seal or anything of the sort. We take another shell which bounces off of our tank, but we do miss the shot in return, unfortunately. This 30B is going to hit us this time. No, he's not aiming at us. And unfortunately, we hit the ridge there. So we're not off. We Well, we were off to a really good start. Now it's kind of like meh. Meh. It's meh. Okay, you know what I'm saying? It's a little bit mad. But we're going to try to get some kills. The other flank is falling, so we've got to kill this flank pretty quickly. Put another shell into the side of that fallen line. Should I have gone for the patent? Maybe I should have, because we might have been able to set him on fire. But I figured, okay, that guy's lower health. May as well go for him. But now I'm going for this guy. I'm spreading my targets out, which is not something you should be doing if you want to win. The fallen line was a one hit. Maybe we should put it in him. But we're going to get the kill on him anyway. Fire the shell off into the side of his tank. But luckily, but luckily, um, we're not even, no, I don't even, that's not even proper. Luckily for us, no magical no magical Soviet armor um, was used in the making of that shot. Now we fire off a shot at a Patriot who's doing very well using his gun depression there and keeping us from going through his upper plate, so we have to switch attention to his lower plate. Yes, as you can see, we have 16 heat shells now. I think we had 12 last time, or maybe I shot some off early and just didn't realize it. But regardless, our team is getting crushed. We're going to put a shell on this guy. Oh, no! Oh no, you saw me stutter there because I underestimated where the end of the ridge was, where I was going to get my gun depression. I didn't want to expose myself too much. Fire another shell, we miss it. Oh no, these are these shots going to come back to haunt us? Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. This Patriot is looking at us. We're going to be able to put a shell into him. He fires into his lower plate. Yes! 397, a great snapshot there. Good job, Patton, for hitting that one there. He's coming up over the ridge again, and boom! Another one into the lower plate of his vehicle. He's now at one shot, but our other flank is completely gone. How are we going to pull this one out? Are we going to be able to finish him off? No, we missed that shell. It goes into the dirt. We aim for his machine gun because he was using his gun depression going over the ridge. Go aiming up a shot at the cheek of his turret. Unable to hit. Now we're pulling in to get away from his gun because we have to kill some tanks now. Our team is starting to just collapse. Are we going to have any shots on anybody down there? Yes, we are. IS-7. Put the shell into the side of the IS-7. The Patriot now wants to come out and play. Will he bounce off of us? He misses our tank completely. Are we going to be able to finish him off? Shell bounces off his tank. Here comes the IS-7. The IS-7 is not too happy with us. Oh, boy. How are we going to get out of this mess? Aiming up the shot at the IS-7. He's not looking. Fired off. We do damage him there. But, unfortunately, we are retaliated by the Patriot. He retaliates and pens us in the side of our vehicle. Now here comes the IS-7, and another tank, oh boy, we're going to shoot the tracks for the IS-7, boom, shell goes into the tracks of the IS-7, and the uh, M103, no, the E5 is not paying any attention, are we going to be able to finish him off? 
Yes, we are. We finished them off, and down goes the Patriot as well. Here's the Patton, not an E5. I don't know what I called it a minute ago. I called it an M103. Put the shell into the back of his tank, and we're going to get under the ridge. Nobody else shoots us. And now we're going to hopefully put another shell into this guy and finish him off before he's loaded. No, we don't roll high enough, and he does damage our fuel tanks. Are we going to fix that? Yes, we are. We don't want to get set on fire because I am I can feel a possible way. We put a shell into him, and we finish him off. Artillery does try its best to hit us, but he does miss, and now it's time to get away. Do I want to stand and fight with my team, or do I want to run away and hopefully get in a better position? Um, running away, I think, is the best option. Artillery misses us again. We dodge him. 30B right there. Fire the shell off, and unfortunately we miss, but he also misses us. Now we're gonna, we don't want to engage this guy right now, right now we just want to get away from here as fast as possible. So I'm going to be going around this ridge so he no longer has shots on us, and just driving away. In comes the epic music, the Steps theme song, as we do our best, our very best, to escape this predicament. They are up on us by quite a few tanks. There's artillery. Are we able to put a shell in him? Yes, we already put the shell in 358. He's now a one hit for us from anywhere. And now we find ourselves in a one versus nine situation. We're going to fire a shell. He hits us in the cupola, but we return the shot there. Now he's a one shot for us. Are we going to be able to finish him off? No, we got to run away. Here comes the bat chat. We're going to be able to finish him off. He's looking at us. Boom, the shell goes in. We finish off the bat chat. It's now a one versus eight scenario. There's the bat chat already there. And the Amex 30B. Here comes the 30B. He misses his shot. Our shot flies true, and we hit him for 111 damage. Now it is one versus seven. Now, watching this back, I know exactly what I should do to get out of this predicament. But unfortunately, when you're in the heat of the moment, your heart is pounding, you make stupid decisions. And instead of continuing to run, I turned in right here. I figured the E4 is going to find a position to shoot me. I should... Oh boy, what was that? That was a little bit of lag there. I should pull pull in here, and I think this is a better position to defend from. Mistake was made. I could have kept running and maybe escaped, but maybe I wouldn't have. But I still think it was a better option than coming here, because this pretty much sealed my fate. Now, unfortunately, we bounced the shell off the IS-3 there, and but he bounces off of us as well. Here comes the E-4. We're going to go for his tracks, hopefully. Boom, we track him, but not before he fires, but he does miss. Bounce another shell there. And here comes the KV-4. We're just going to go for kills now. Put a shell into the side of the KV-4. Are we going to be able to finish off this KV-4 before we die? We are in such a bad situation. We finish off the KV-4, giving us the top gun and 20 second damage before, unfortunately, we go down. We should have kept running and shot from afar. We could have killed that E-4, could have killed that E-3, and then continued. And then, you know, picked them off one by one by one instead of... Turning and fighting them all at once. 7,400 damage, 1,800 damage block. The Reaper Metal and First Class. And we still have two marks of excellence. And uh, a couple of points for whatever was going on. I forget what it was. 88% is what we're at now. Moving on to the next battle where we are now platooned with Alive. But now that I think of it, um, I don't think this was completely in order. I think that game I just showed you, um, I labeled it Patent 3. And this one is patent 4 and then patent 5. I think I label it patent 3. I forget why, but um, this one I'm platooned with alive. So was this later? Did I join his party and then we not actually platoon up? I don't know. I don't know. But now we're platooned up and we are taking on the new map, Numenhan. And I've been having a lot of good map games on this map as of late. I still don't think it's a very good map, but uh, it is definitely easy to abuse in my opinion. I've been definitely able to outposition players because I don't think people have yet to figure this map out. And I think I have a pretty good idea on how to play it. And I've, it's, it's been really nice. But I still don't like the map, even though it's pretty easy right now at the moment. Uh, positioning. I like the other side of the map a little bit better because of uh, some really nice scouting locations I like to use. Which you'll be seeing in the upcoming Leopard Prototype replay. Which I did live, and you'll learn that position very nicely. But from this side, I like going up to this ridge using these rocks. And you're safe from pretty much everything, even artillery. You're able to spot things as they cross. Hopefully, we'll be able to demonstrate it here. Um, there we go. See, look at that. Nice, easy shot in the side of that guy. Boom, straight in the side of the E50M. And we're, we're hiding from artillery here. And look at that from this position. Look at we can use our gun depression like that. And we miss. I thought he was going to remain track, so I whipped it off because I knew he was going to get behind the rock. But he continues to drive, and we could have easily shot him in the side. But he's not that bright. Nope. Oh, yes, he is bright. I don't know. It's hard to tell with players like that. Side of a Death Star, boom, goes into the side of the Death Star. See, anyone who tries to advance, we can just slap right here. There we go, E5. Come on, E5. You know you want some of this. Ah, oh, we miss him there. E50M just came out again. It's like he knows. Ah, oh, Chrome Guy fired. Time to poke out. Accidentally. But we're hopefully going to put this into him. Come on. Come on. Back up. 
Oh no, it goes into the rock. But we're getting some assist. Looks like artillery landed a shot on somebody. Come on. Oh, there's the E5 again. No, he doesn't want to get shot. But I guess that's enough of that. But as you can see, you know, if we were hitting our shots and paying more attention, we could have racked up maybe even 1,500, maybe even 2,000 damage by now. Unfortunately, though, clone guy does not know how to aim. Side of an E4, go for his tracks. Boom! Track him and damage him for 404. Now he's going to be down a repair kit, or he's going to choose to just let it repair from there. It looks like he let it, let it repair. And we unfortunately don't get any assist off of him. Artillery does miss a shot. There's the Death Star. Gonna put a shell into him. RBRT. That one looks like it flew a little bit high, maybe. Or maybe, I don't know where it went. It looks like it flew high. But there is a mouse. Fire off a shot into the side of his tank. We're trying to hit underneath the turret. And it does, in fact, fly true. But he is aiming at us. We don't want to take the risk of taking any damage. There's no need to take damage right now. Mouse is driving across now. Put a shell into... No, it goes... I don't know if we bounced off his side or if that went into his turret. But I th that probably went to his turret, but it looked like it went to his side, but it did bounce off. But he's giving us a side again. That shell, once again, does not penetrate his side. you got to hit high on the mouse. If you hit too low, it's going to get absorbed by everything. Are we able to pen him now? Yes, RBRT works, apparently. And it does go in. In case those of you who don't know what RBRT stands for, it's right bumper, right trigger. So that's where you auto-lock and fire, and you let the game, you know, do its thing. Because I know some of you were asking about that. We're only up to six penetrations, but you know, damage is damage. Aiming at the tracks, yes, we're able to hit the tracks of that tank. Remember, all assist damage goes to your mark of excellence. He's aiming at us. We don't want to get hit. We pull back. We're going to hopefully put another shell into his tracks. But there's a Death Star there. I'm a little bit cautious of that Death Star, but he doesn't seem to be paying attention. Side of turret. Oh, bad shot there. The Jaeger poked out for us. We could have finished off the Jaeger. But let's see if I noticed or if I'm completely tunneled. I'm still completely tunneled. The Jaeger is right there. Finish the the Jaeger finally goes down to artillery. So I didn't even notice that, but uh, that's something new, that uh, or something uh, I just discovered while watching this, where I was completely a muppet there, and you guys are probably yelling at me. But uh, when you're playing, it's a lot different than when you're watching, and I'm watching on a small screen, and that's how sad I am that I didn't notice that kill shot in that Jaeger for so long. <sighs> One thing I wanted to mention. Which I now forget. It, oh yes, the Panzer Kampfwagen 7. If you're fighting a Panzer Kampfwagen 7, you can actually shoot him straight in the gun. Or at least straight next to the gun, into the mantlet. It's a super weak spot there. I was able to 1v1 one face-hugging with my M103. Not my M103, I'm just looking at one. With my Lova, and I was firing standard, and I was able to take one down like that. Oh, come on, fly straight! Yes, it goes into the side of that turret of the T110E4. But this M103 is kind of like, okay, I just want to counter you right now, and then give you the side of my turret. And so we put the shell on the side of the turret. I remember this game, and I, it felt like he was countering me for a lot longer. But now it doesn't seem like it. Or maybe he is. I don't know. Maybe maybe he does counter me for longer. Um, he's right there. Are we going to able to finish him off? No, that one bounces off. Uh, I guess he was countering me for a little while longer than I was hoping. You know what I'm saying? But if he can go down, then I will be able to shoot the sides of these tanks. But I'm still worried about the tanks in the back waiting to shoot me. There's the Death Star. Right there, he seems to be pulling back. There's the E4, are we able to finish off the E4? Come on, clone guy, do something. There's the E4, come on! Boom, we finished off this E4, shooting him in the side of the tank. And now we turn our attention to our left flank. 50B, out of nowhere, we put a shell into him. But then I realized, okay, it looks like the team is going to start swarming. So we got to start doing some damage, so I'm willing to take some hits. This is why I saved my hit points from the M103. So I could do stuff like this. Our turret gets jammed, we immediately fix it, and now he's pulling back. So we're hopefully going to be able to put another shell into him. No, it doesn't look like we are. We're going to go around the corner. Yes, we are. There he is. Boom. Put a shell in 341 into him. But, uh, well, surprise E100. Hello, E100. Shoots HE at us. Hits us. But we are able to pen him with that shot. Not sure how that went in, but it did. So I'm not going to complain. Up to 13 damaging hits and 13 spotted target ribbons. We're going to hopefully kill this E100, or maybe someone else will do it for us as we close the distance, because our team is starting to really annihilate the enemy team. And this is the phase where you want hit points and you want a little bit of mobility so you can get in and farm as much damage as you can. And that's exactly what's going to happen for us right here. Aim up a shot at the side of the Death Star and we do put it in. E4 finishes off the 50B so he's unable to clip us out because he definitely could have clipped us there. E100, are we going to be able to finish him off? No, we have a waffle there. Put the shell into the waffle there. When you're, when you're trying to 3 mark, you don't need kills. So I've decided to go for the waffle. But I am going to kill this guy because that is 369. It's plenty of damage. The reason I went for him instead of the waffle is because he can shoot. if he decides to shoot us, he'll end our game. Now, I already know we're going to win, so I'm going for as much damage as possible. I'm not going for kill shots. 
And that's something you need to keep in mind when you're trying to 3 mark. You put another shell into the waffle. He is going to take about 5 hits to kill, but I'm only going to shoot him 4 times before I switch my attention to the Emil, if I remember correctly. No, it looks like I am going to finish him off. Nope, see, I'm going for the Emil. Ah, he gets finished off, and our greed costs us from getting any extra kills. Oh! Are we actually going to be able to kill him? Yes, we are. We actually do kill him. My bad. I lied to you guys. But here comes the T92. Are we going to be able to put a shell into him before he gets away? Aiming up the shot of the side of the tank. Yes, we are. 410 damage done into the side of the T92. But he does get around the rock, and he does turn around, getting ready for the final shotgun of the game. Kudos to him for actually going down fighting, though there is no place you can actually drown, so I guess every artillery unit is forced to do this. I bet you he would have drowned himself on any other map because, you know, artillery. And the game is finished! 20 damaging hits and 14 spotted targets and a couple of kills a few kills actually a couple kills is just two right depends what your take on it is 7600 damage 3660 assisted damage three kills seven spots and 490 damage blocked mastery ace tanker and a brothers and arms pretty good game there if i do say so myself we're up to 90.66 it looks like this game was after that last game that i was just talking to you guys about which is quite interesting that uh, that I joined his party and then we didn't play right away. But now we find ourselves on Casserine. Casserine, right? It used to be Casserine Pass, right? But now it's just Casserine, or am I, is that just because what it's called in history? Well, regardless, we are going to be trying to take this map down. And so this is a pretty quick replay. Not as quick as the next one, however, though. Holy cow, I'm looking at the next one. It's like, wait, what? Wait, what? Like, am I sure that's a whole replay? That next one that's gonna be playing? Uh, okay. But here we are on Castorine. We got the Sand River theme playing because we don't have a Castorine theme. But I think it fits because it's the same location, same uh, general location during World War II. Now, on this map, what I like doing, I do a lot of now. As you can tell when I have a cut, because I always say now. Now! No, I'm just kidding. What I like doing is getting up close up to this ridge because you're pretty safe from all shots except for people who come up behind you, and so that's pretty good. And you're able to shoot people on the side, you're pretty, you're not really safe from Artie. But, you know, I still like using it, you know, you gotta, sometimes you just gotta pretend artillery isn't in the game to get results done. Now, this Jaeger stops behind that rock, it's like he knows where I am, but we get spotted from the left, right there. Am I gonna shoot them or are we gonna shoot this Jaeger? It depends what the Jaeger does, because I don't want to get hit by him. He's gonna back up, or is he gonna go forward? Alright, let's turn our attention to this uh, to these medium tanks while we wait. We're gonna just RBRT that because I got they said I was targeted, so I didn't know if it was Jaeger who turned to shoot me, but he did not. We do track the action X, we do get some assist off of him. Now we go for the tracks of the Jaeger, and we do blow them off. Are we gonna be able to put any more shells into the side of the Jaeger? Come on. Boom! Right into his side again. I'm sure we damaged his tracks there. I think we nicked the side of his drive wheel but he also blows uh, his engine you'll see, you're seeing what I'm doing I'm aiming the left most part of his frontal drive wheel the reason for that is because um, if I aim too far to the right I'm not gonna actually hit his tanks armor and I'm only gonna damage his his tracks now we put a shell into the gun of I think an E75 Luckily, though, he hasn't noticed yet. Now he does notice we're going to put the shell into the side of his tank. So it doesn't really matter, in my opinion, that we hit the gun there, because had we hit the Death Star, he would have turned around anyway. So now we're not going to be able to put any more shells in, because you don't want to even test your RNG against the Death Star. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. He's still staring. He's still staring. Still staring. No, he's not. Ah, uh, small screen. I couldn't quite tell. Now we put another shell into him. He's going to turn around. He's going to turn around slowly. We're going to be able to put another shell into him, it looks like. Boom! Another shell into the side of the Death Star. I think, well, why don't you shoot the heavy tank? The VK, not the E-75, the VK. Uh, the reason for that is because the VK can't one-shot me. The Death Star can. So I'm going to shoot the Death Star, even though if I had shot the VK three times, he'd be a one-hit for me. But, you know, that doesn't matter. We need to not die. Death Star is not looking again. Hopefully we'll be able to put another shell into him. Uh, yes, we are. 391 damage roll, but he does pull back to escape. And I've decided I'm not going to try to risk that on my fall side of Patton. Unfortunately, he misses. But, you know, if he stands still, we'll be able to put another one into him. Uh, I didn't realize where this guy was This guy was at first. I thought he was further back, so I was going to sit there and put another shell in. But then when I alive, I was like, dude, there's an E5 right here. And I was like, oh, he's right there, crud! And so uh, I did have to, to move. He finds a shell, and it looks like it poked up a little too far. He hits us in the tracks, but now he's a one-hit. So hopefully he won't be bothering us again. 
because he probably doesn't want to die. So worry, we can go back to shooting these medium tanks. Hello, medium tanks. I heard you like being shot in the face. I will not miss you this time, hopefully. Um, come on, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, there it is. Fire it. Ah, well, you know, we tracked him, whatever. It's all good. Uh, we'll be able to damage him this time. We're getting some tract assist. Good, that's good. Boom, and we finish him off and some more tract assist. There, Death Star. I thought about die bombing him, and I changed my mind immediately. It's like, nah, there's still plenty of hit points. Let's not throw our life away just yet. We can die bomb him later. That's a great idea. Live is getting flanked by this guy. We put a shell into his ammo rack by hitting him in the front because America. Here comes the E5. Are we able to finish off the E5? Uh, no, let's. Uh, oh, okay. E5 gets finished off by Alive. We're still trying to feather some shots at anybody. Here's the VK. He's coming all this way just for us to shoot him. Put a shell in the side of his tank. We're getting around him, but he is going to shoot us. It is what it is. But we should finish him off with this shot here because we have a great rate of fire. It goes in right as Alive fires, but we do get the kill for ourselves. Now, you have to decide where do I want to go to get more damage. I've decided to turn around to go for the Waffle E100. Got to put a shell into his front of his turret there. Now we're going to load some HE shells. We're hopefully going to be not, you know, hitting his gun or an angled plate. Boom, straight in, 470 damage there. And now he is a conceivable one shot, it looks like. I could be wrong. We'll fire off another shell, and it goes in for 479 damage. Not bad. Now there's one more tank. No, there's, sorry, three more tanks left, but one more on our flank. We're going to hopefully find some shells into the side of this Death Star before we move on to the other tanks, if we even have time to move on to them. But um, right now I'm trying to figure out who is the better target to shoot at, because it looked like that Death Star was behind cover, so I figured the Death Star, the E5 is an easier shot, but no, apparently not. We're still trying to find shots, like where could we have gone? Maybe we should have gone after the Death Star. No, he gets finished off, we never would have made it in time. So where is the Sheridan? Well, as it turns out, he drove all the way back to base just to get shotgunned by the T-92, and we don't get any more damage off of him, but we do get a victory and a pretty decent result. Not a great result, but definitely one I wanted to show you guys, because I said hello to a marathon. 6,500 damage. Oh, I guess we did more damage than I thought. This tank can just do damage sometimes, and 2,600 assisted for over 9,000 total combined damage once again, and now we're going to be moving on to our sixth replay. We only have three left, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this amazing marathon um, as we celebrate 1,000 subscribers. Holy cow, guys. Thank you so much. We find ourselves on Overlord. Don't you guys love this amazing soundtrack? World of Tanks has done something right. I mean, I think they do a lot of things right. And uh, for however much the community just rats on them, they the game is still intact. And... Wow, this music is makes me want to be nice to wargaming. But no, in all honesty, you know, artillery at first I think was a good idea before... Because, you know, artillery came out before premium rounds were cheap. You had to pay for them with real money. And so, I think artillery was needed for E3s, E100s, mouses, stuff like that. So I'm not going to say that was a bad idea. But uh, they did keep it in the game and they haven't really nerfed it much. And I think, you know, that was because, you know, if you do that, you lose part of your player base, the artillery players, which I think is good riddance to them. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, I know, I'm being a complete jerk, aren't I? Well, not really. Not really. I'm a nice guy. Put a couple shells into the side of those tanks there, and now we're going to change our attention to this Pershing, who was already tracked, so I just put a shell into his tank. I didn't need to track him or anything, because I wouldn't get any assist, because somebody already did that for me. And now we're going to put another shell into the side of his tank, and now he's ammo wrecked, and now he's dead. GG to you. I wonder if he had fun. We're up to four damaging hits already, guys. And we're only in the first few moments of this game. Lots of tier 8s in this one, actually. Boom, I didn't even realize that until now. Going after this 140. He's a tier 10, one of the few tier 10s. Any damage to him is a great success. I'm just afraid of what's in the back. Nah, you know what? We don't know what's in the back yet. Look at all the tank destroyers. Oh boy, definitely not something we want to go after. But yeah. Anyway, so PC matchmaking is ruined. The matchmaking on our consoles, guys, on the console is great, okay? Console is great, so please don't complain about our matchmaking. It is so good. Um, granted, if you're bottom tier, you're probably usually really bottom tier. It's usually like if you're tier 8 and you go up against 10s, usually there's only like 2 or 3 tier 8s on either team. But, because of that, you're top tier a lot more. And that's something I've definitely realized is I'm top tier 
or at least mid tier more than I am bottom tier because matchmaker and like they have three five seven on PC where there's three top five mid seven bottom tier which is awful by the way because then you're never top tier I played two hours yesterday and I was top tier twice two hours top tier twice think about that um meanwhile on here because it's it's more like 753 where there's seven top tiers five mid tiers three bottom tiers it feels like and so because of that your bottom when you're bottom tier yeah you're pretty much screwed well but you know then you get to carry and just surprise people but yeah you're 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 not you know it's not not a fun time all the time but at the same time because of that you're top tier more than you are bottom tier and i think that's a lot better and plus it's a lot more random on pc the games are the same every single time one team dominates one team loses you have it's they have same class matchmaking um, in fact, they have same role matchmaking, so super heavies go against super heavy. so if I have a tier 10 super heavy, they have a super, tier 10 super heavy. If I have a tier 10 assault TD, they have a tier 10 assault TD. If I have a tier 10 uh, Soviet medium, they have a tier 10 Soviet medium. And so it's like, it's so uniform, it's boring, the games are the same every single time. Meanwhile on here, Matchmaker really doesn't care, and I kind of like that, the games are different every single time, and I enjoy it. Um, it's a lot less steamrolls on here than it is on PC because on PC you have um, three top tier tanks. So if you have one team has a Unicum top tier tank, the other team doesn't, you lose. Because if you lose, and if you have a Potato top tier tank, you lose. Meanwhile, on here, you have a chance. On PC or a console, you have a chance. So guys, we have it good. Trust me, we have it good. PC. <laughs> does not have a good I feel so bad for PC players guys the only reason I don't do more PC is because of the matchmaking and the RD is super annoying and I don't have good crews but yeah anyway we're rambling about that um, this game is almost over fine I'm gonna fire a shell into this guy hopefully hit his lower plate boom it goes into his lower plate he does hit us there big hit inside of our tank but we're hopefully gonna be able to put in the shell into him and finish him off no we're unable to as he gets finished off by the Stritzvong S1 giving us giving him Sritzvong the kill. 19 damaging hits, 4 kills. How much damage did we do in that 4 minute game, 5 minute game, whatever it was? 6,600 damage, 750 assisted damage, and a first class once again. Not quite getting the aces like we were earlier, but it was still, I'd say, a pretty good game. We're up to 93.02% now. Going up and up and up we are. But now we find ourselves on Serene Coast Encounter. Not a map I was, I'm too fond of. However, if you play it right and play your cards right, you seem to have, you can do pretty well. You can do pretty well. This is a full tier 10 game, a lot of hit points. No artillery on either team, which is great news because those can always ruin your day with one shot artillery. Like, sometimes they don't, you know, pay attention to you, but sometimes they do, and sometimes they miss, and sometimes they hit. They're definitely something you don't want to see, just be for that RNG factor. You know, like, oh, I feel like I'm always getting focused by artillery. But when you really look at stats, guys, the only reason you probably don't get focused by artillery as much as you think. Um, because it just feels like it when you do. Because when you remember when you get focused by them, but you don't remember when you don't. Like, all these games... I forgot that there really wasn't much artillery in the game, and uh, yeah, this is this. You don't remember that. You only remember the artillery shooting you. That's all you remember when is when you get hit by artillery. But yeah, there's really not much artillery in this. They've pushed the beach pretty hard, but I forget that's where they spawn on this version of the map. So we're not really getting any spots from here. But I'm gonna still try. No, nothing. Okay, we're gonna make some kind of bold play. Because when nothing's going on, you, then you gotta make something. Am I right or am I right? Another thing about PC I don't like is the artillery. Um, they stun you now. And um, they buffed all the artillery's reloads. Like, artillery has like a a couple second reload. Like, a, like uh, T92 has like a 38 second reload. And it can splash you and stun you for about 30 seconds. So, if it chooses you. Like, okay, you're the person I'm gonna stun for the rest of the game. You're gonna be stunned for 30 seconds. And then not stun for 8, stun for 30, not stun for 8, stun for 30. And that does not sound like fun to me. And it's not. I have been hit by artillery in that game. And it is the most annoying thing ever. I'd rather you just one shot me instead of death by a thousand paper cuts where you can't do anything. Because when you're stunned, you really almost can't do anything. Your gun bloom is huge. Your reload is awful. Your accuracy is awful. Your aim time is awful. Your mobility is awful. And you can't do anything. And now it's just like, why am I just not dead? Can you just kill me now, please? Meanwhile, 
on on here, you know, you don't get stunned. Granted, they do a whole lot more damage to you, but they're not as accurate. They don't aim in as quickly, and I think the reloads are slightly longer on here. So, you know, it's... And here it's all or nothing. On there, it's pain. And their splash radius is huge now. They don't even have to damage your tank to stun you. That's ridiculous. I think if the tank doesn't damage you, they shouldn't be able to stun you. Or the artillery, you know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of grievances I have with PC. Definitely a lot of grievances. And I know I'm talking about things that's not even relevant for us. Well, this is a long video, guys. I've got a lot of things to talk about, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be talking about a lot of things. Like, for instance, you guys giving me a 1,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Once again, I, I just can't stop thanking you guys. So enjoy this. And I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video about all of the... Uh, different ways to get experience i hope you guys didn't know all all about that like something i didn't know until recent was the fact that as long as you're in close proximity to enemies and they're shooting you're getting all you're getting experience you know that's something new now chieftain you're gonna watch some terrible play here Just aim at his engine deck but right as we pull back we lose our gun depression and shoot it into his turret so now we're gonna try to put it into the top of his tank boom we put it into his engine deck that time he just fired we have about the same reload so i'm gonna try to beat him uh we're unable to from this angle i should be able to pin him everywhere except for the very front of his turret we can just go through his upper plate go through his roof go through his engine deck uh but now he's kind of angling and that shell unfortunately misses his cupola but now i'm just gonna assume he doesn't use food so i'm gonna beat his reload and so we're gonna just fire this into the dirt once again it's completely, uh, completely missing. And, and this goes on for a while, if I remember correctly. And that one goes over his tank. I swear my cursor was on his tank that time. Will we hit him this time? Yes, finally, we do some damage to him. And he's yet to do damage to us. I don't want to test his accuracy, guys. This is like, okay, 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 come on. Mm, no, 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 yeah, okay. We'll do it. Oh, he does find a shot. Oh, and we track him only. Oh, gosh darn, guys. I was, I, he angled. And I wasn't, I wasn't ready for the angle. And I should be helping alive right now because he's by himself. But I'm too busy not helping him and not caring. And too focused on this chieftain. And I realized, you know what? This chieftain's going to beat me in a, in a, in a raw battle. we got to get out of here. So I'm going to be going down to the beach. And this is where I'm going to make my escape. And hopefully salvage this game. Because we kind of, you know, we still have hit points. I'd say we handled that situation pretty well. We only really got two penetrations out of it. But I still feel we handled it decently. Um, because, you know, we're still alive, and we've only taken one hit of damage. And we're just waiting for this chief, and I thought he was going to come around the corner, but he doesn't seem to want to come around the corner, and am I going to go after him or not? That is a good question. Now, this game, I was feeling, I was feeling my third mark. I had a couple more games with Alive, and I think I was at 93.5, and so this game... I, I thought, you know, a really good game, I could probably three mark it, and with our team falling apart like this... If I can get in a position where the enemy team doesn't pay attention to me and continues to fight my uh, my team, I might be able to get my third mark out of this. So that's what was going through my mind right now was third mark, third mark, third mark, on the move, into the E5, third mark, third mark, third mark. That shot was like a sign. Are we going to be able to finish him off? Now he gets around the corner, and now we're going to come up here, and it's like, oh yeah, they're not paying attention to me. This is it, this is it, this is it. Oh boy, yes, side, boom, straight in the side of that E5, nice, good shot, and then we should have shot the E100, I figured, okay, let's shoot the softer target instead, aim up at the lower plate, boom, into his ammo rack, we actually hit the side of his tank, and now we're hopefully going to put another shell into him, the E100 is still not paying any attention, got to put a shell in, uh, just go, ah, bounces off his lower plate, this guy's rocking like a madman, he's like, ah, oh, don't shoot me, don't shoot me, don't shoot me, that's how you know they're panicking, is when they're rocking back and forth really, really, really fast, is, you know, they're panicking, they're really, really panicking. And he puts a shell into us there. We put a shell into his tracks. Now we're going to load some heat shells. Yes, I have 20 heat shells now. I did up it a little bit. E100 is now looking at me. And I'm going to put the SOS. Good SOS and shout like, help me, guys. Help me. They're all looking at me. Help, help. I want them to... See, I'm trying to... What I'm trying to do is notify him. Notify them that they're both looking at me. It's like, okay, help me. Shoot these guys. They're both looking at me. And you can shoot them. And he does go around the corner, and right as he does is when I'm already changing my position, and because of that he gets finished off. But we're going to hopefully put a shell into the back of the C100. Boom! Shell in the back of the 100 there. And, ooh, bounce. Somebody bounces off. It must have been a chieftain. There's two of them still alive. And shell in the side. Boom, yes, we've put another shell in the side of that IS-4. And by another, I mean our very first shell. We're going to keep the heat loaded. This is going to be an expensive match, definitely. But you know what? When you're this close to three marks of excellence, and you're fighting this many heavy tanks at tier 10... You're going to be shooting that gold rounds. Side of his turret. Boom, it goes in. 361 rolled there. He is now a potential one hit. He does hit our tank there. He's getting really lucky with his splash, with his with his hits. But we do finish him off. His, uh, his 
<laughs> panic mode rocking was not able to uh, to save him there. I, I don't know why. That just I find that so funny. They're just rocking back and forth. Rock, 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 rock. Like don't pay me, don't pay me, don't pay me, don't pay me. And it's just like it's definitely a panic mode. But unfortunately for him, it does not help him out at all. The simple joys in life, guys. The simple joys, you gotta find them sometimes. Put a shell, another shell in the side of the E100, but we take a shell from what I believe was a chieftain again. There's a chieftain somewhere. There's two chieftains just sitting in the back of the map sniping. And they've been doing it the entire time. Like that first chieftain we encountered was sniping. And that's why he's full health when we encountered him. And then that second chieftain, which just shot us a moment ago, has also been sitting in the back of the map the entire time. So chieftains apparently really like to snipe in this. Uh, unfortunately there, the heat gets absorbed, of course, by the rubble. I tried to snap it off. He's not looking now. We're going to put a shell on the side of his turret. Yes, 335. We've been rolling incredibly low on this guy, but there's the chieftain we were talking about. Is that the chieftain we were fighting earlier? I think it is, because I think the other chieftain is a one-hit. Put a shell. Oh, no, he hits us, but he rolls low, and we get insanely, insanely lucky. But now, you know what? This is free, easy damage. Put it in, and we finish him off. Now here comes a full health Death Star, and that Chieftain is still looking, it's like, Chieftain, come on, man! And I can't go up to my other side, which I like to shoot from, because then the other Chieftain will shoot me. We're in quite a pickle, guys. We got two Chieftains from different angles, keeping us from poking up from either side. So what are we going to do? I'm trying to, okay, you know what, where can I go? It looked like their chief, the other Chieftain, when I came this way, was heading towards that drop-off zone where I was just at. So I think I can come back up here and put some shells into the side of this guy. Boom, put the shell into the Death Star there. Yeah, there's a chieftain. He is spotted. And he is headed in the other direction. So we're going to be able to put another shell into this guy. Boom, we snap it off. Another low roll. And the other chieftain is getting punished. And we're getting all the assist. Come on, Death Star. Come on, Death Star. Do it if you can. Okay, this Coppola is huge and it's annoying me. If he hits us through these white little thingamajiggers, I'm going to be pretty upset. But now I'm turning around to check my rear and make sure the chieftain isn't sticking up behind us. Because this is the direct this is where it looked like he was heading, was like I said to the drop-off area, so we definitely want to catch him before he gets into a position to counter us. We want to get him while he's on the move. There he is. Fire up the shot, we only track him there. Is he looking at us? I can't tell with the small screen, but we're gonna try to side scrape him while he's above us and aim this one carefully, and it goes in to the lower plate of his tank. And there's the other chieftain right there. Are we going to be able to finish him off? We're up to 17 damaging hits. Three kills and a bit of assist. Are we able to finish him? On the move? No, we're not able to hit him. Oh, oh is he going to kill us? This might have been a mistake. No, he gets finished off by the 4005, who saves our life. And he gets finished off. Now, this was not the third mark of excellence, in case you guys are wondering. But do not worry. We are on to that. The grand finale. The end of all, we actually made money because of that off there. 6,200 damage, 2,400 assisted. Why did we make so much? Why did we get an ace tanker this time, but not before? The reason we got an ace tanker this time and not before is because we were in close proximity to the enemy the entire time, and every time they shot, we got more experience. Keep that in mind, and plus the tank we, tanks we killed, I'm pretty sure that E5 we killed was actually a pretty good player, and I think it was already up to a bit of damage. Now, enjoy this cinematic before this game starts as we jump into the final game in our patent before the third mark of excellence. Um, this one, I knew I was going to post, so I went back into the replay system and, and downloaded it just to make sure I had for you guys some fancy, some fancy views and angles for you guys. And I hope you guys are okay with this and you enjoy it as we jump into the game. I only cut out parts of the start so you didn't see me driving, and now we join ourselves at the start of the game. Conqueror there in front of us. Are we going to be able to get some shells into the him? Batchat 12T spotted us, unfortunately, as we were getting into position. But now we're into our position. From this side of the map, I don't like going into the dip because it's a lot easier for their side of the map to ambush our side of the map when you're in the dip. Mm. That Conqueror knows he's hull down, and the only way we're going to kill him is if artillery digs him out, but we don't have artillery. So instead, I'm going to shoot this T-30. Oh, but this Tiger 2 has volunteered himself as tribute, so we'll just put one straight through his cheeks because his turret means nothing to us. A meal 2 now, giving us the side of his tank. Boom, straight into the side of his tank. Boom, easy damage, easy, cheap, reliable damage. I believe his side armor is either 20 or 30 millimeters, so we will overmatch. Then into the side of his turret, and some nice, decent rolls there, and he's now at half health. Now we're going to push on this T30, our BRT, and it bounces off. I was kind of afraid of what might be looking at us, so that's why we snapped that one off. Now we're going to fire a shell into this E4, hopefully fire it off, and yes, we are... 413 damage done. There's the Tiger 2. We're going to be able to put a shell in the Tiger 2. Aiming up a shot at the side of his turret. And boom! Put it in. Put this Jaeger. 
This Jaeger, he knows. That Jaeger's in a good, gotta be in a good position. He knows it. I know it. We all know it. Emil gets away. So we'll just shoot this guy again. We aim for the back of his tank. Unfortunately, it goes to the ridge. We probably should have shot the turret. But I figured the turret is such an unreliable thing to shoot. Because, you know, if you hit him, hit the angled, the angled side armor, it's going to bounce off. Hit the mantle, it's going to bounce off. Angled roof, it's going to bounce off. So we went for the side of his tank, and we miss. And then we go for the side of that turret, that tall turret, and we miss again. Now this Conqueror is poked up a little too high, so we put the shell straight into his lower plate. 439 damage. That Conqueror will be bu getting buffed later, um, or early next month in September. It's going to have 152 millimeters, or 150 millimeters of frontal plate armor. I forget exactly what the number is, but it's the same as the 215B. I fire a speculative shot into the, uh, the, uh, the, the superstructure of that Jaegeru, that Jagman 3100, and I load the heat immediately so I can go through it. The reason I, I took that shot, um, I was never gonna, I, okay, I was most likely never going to penetrate. But, I, you know, I can't say never, because, you know, there's a chance, because your pens can roll high, and I know that. It's 250, it's angled, he's angled back, I have 268 millimeters of penetration, so I can roll for th over 330, and so I figured, you know what, maybe I'll get a max penetration roll and I'll go in. So I took the shot because I was going to reload heat anyway, so may as well shoot the shot off as I go for the reload, right? So I did. Yeager misses his shot, and so now we're going to have some free, easy, cheap, reliable damage, hopefully into one of these tanks. Um, maybe this guy. Boom, straight into him, the heat. N stands. His armor stands no chance to this heat. Like, easy mode. But, you know, um, the ground does stand a chance to the heat. And uh, that's where the shot goes. And then this next shot, he's angled back really nicely. And so, of course, we bounce off again. And I was just like, okay, we're going for it. Side of the Jagdpanzer 100 and that shot will throw. And we're unable to do any damage to him. But we're going to keep our heat loaded for the Jagdpanzer 100 because we don't know when we might need to shoot him next. I'm ah, just kidding. We're loading standard again because we're going to be going after his side. That is the plan anyway. Tank's on our left. Tank's on our right. Light tank there. We're going to be able to hit him. Oh, he stops! He's psychic, guys, and he damages our tracks, and now he pulls back! He could have escaped! He could have escaped! But now he's just like, here, shoot me, clone guy, shoot me! And we miss again. He's given us the opportunity to shoot him again. Um, instead of escaping over the tracks, he was home free. He is retreated back onto our side of the tracks. But, you know, we're not really paying attention to him. He's not a big threat, but, you know, free shots into this waffle? Nope. Free shots into that guy? Nope. Jagdpanzer spots us again. Nope, it was actually the light tank. There we go. There's the shot we we're looking for. Straight into the side of the Waffle E100. The Eggman's is still alive. I'm not going to help with him. I'm tasting my third mark of excellence. And so, yes, I'm going to be greedy and go after. I'm not shooting the light tank still because I still don't see him as a threat. I'm going to go for the easy, cheap damage. This is what you want to do when you're trying to free mark, guys. Easy, cheap, reliable damage is definitely what I want to go for. I should have shot the E50 if I wanted easy, cheap, reliable damage, but I shot the front of a Death Star instead. But now I switch my attention to the E50. I already know my team has won the game, so that is why you see me going for not kills, not winning shots, but instead... Um, these more easy, these easier shots here. Gotta go after this 12T. This 12 ton has been evading me all game, but he's unable to evade that shot as it does find its mark. And you're gonna see some ridiculous RNG. Maybe this shot? No, not that shot. That shot was poorly aimed, but it did fly straight. Back of an E50? Mm, nope. How about this E4? Boom! Straight into, wow, straight into that E4. Now how about uh, this this uh, charioteer, can we do the same thing to him? Boom! Straight into the charioteer! Now how about this E50? Can we do the same exact thing we just did to those two, except even more intense than this E50? Boom! Straight into the E50! Yes, of course we can! We're the patent! Yo! And this is our third mark game, of course we can do that, guys. <laughs> Lol. Like, seriously, RNG, thank you so much for the end of this game. That was ridiculous, insane RNG. Wow. Is that going to be a third mark of excellence? I think I already spoiled it for you guys, and you guys already know what it's going to be. Uh, we're just waiting for the post-game results to load. Load post-game results. Oh, that's right. You click A now. This is back when they finally fixed it. 143,000 credits made. I think the double X yes, credit booster is going. 69,000. 6,900 damage. 7,000 assisted. A bit of block. Two kills. And our third mark of excellence. 95.19%, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys all enjoyed. If you did, please slap that like button, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you go check out Space Bandit. Make sure you go check out Got a Dinghy and uh, Spartan Elite's YouTube. All of those links will be in the description below. If you want to join the Discord or join the Clan Clan Clone Guy, link is also going to be in the description below. Um, this replay will be posted again all by itself if you want to hear a different take on it. 
um, it will be posted again for people who don't watch this video. Thank you guys once again so much for watching. Tell me if you said too. Take care and peace out.